Moving on to item number 41. Given circle O with angle AOB of 81 degrees and minor arc AB of 2x plus 27 degrees, find the value of x. 20, 21, 23, or 27. From here, we could actually see that uh, I hope we could still recall that the measure of the central angle in degrees is equal to the measure of the intersected arc in degrees. Hence, we have to equate 2x 20 plus 27 with 81. Subtracting 21, we have both sides. We have 2x equals 54. Dividing both sides by 2, which means x is 27, letter D. 42. The triangle as shown has an area of 100 square units. How long is X in units? Did you go with 20, 25, 30, or 35? So you could see that you have here 75, 75, and this has to be 30. And this is isosceles, so therefore this is also X here. That's why I have this figure now. And you have here uh, two sides and an included angle. And this triangle has an area of one of uh, the given area earlier. But if you have two sides and an included angle, you could actually use the formula area equals one half AB sine C, where A and B are the two sides and C is the included angle here. So by substitution, the area is 100 equals one half times x times x times sine 30 degrees. Multiplying both sides by two here, by the way, uh, I multiplied both sides by two. That's why I have 200 equals x times x, x squared. Sine 30 is one half. That's why I multiplied here another one half. Times two again will give 400 equals x squared. And principal square root of both sides yields x equals 20. Hence, letter A is the correct answer. 43. Simplify this complex fraction 1 minus 1 over A squared all over 1 plus 1 over A. Did you go with A, B, C, or D? It might not, it might not be too apparent but if you could see with our numerator, this is in fact a difference of two squares. How come? One is a perfect square. So the square root of this, uh, I mean one over a squared is also a perfect square. In fact, its square root is one over a. So solving this one, it's a difference of two squares you have. You could factor this as one plus the square root of this one over a, then copy this one, then make it minus in the middle. And so the numerator here the may, could be expressed as the product of 1 plus 1 over a and 1 minus 1 over a. Then I just copy the denominator here. And if you could see, we could actually cancel them. And thus, you have 1 minus 1 over a. But the LCD, if we wanted to express them as a single fraction, we need to get their LCD. In this case, a. And making this or combining them into a single fraction, a divided by 1 here, that's a, times 1, you have a here, minus 1, then over the common denominator. So letter D is the correct answer. 44. What is the sum of all cubes of the whole numbers from 1 until 10? Did you go with A, B, C, or D? So for this one, I'm not sure if you are very familiar with the theorem, but we have the sum of all cubes starting from one. One cube plus two cube plus three cube all the way until n cube is in fact n times n plus one all over two and the square of this entire thing. It's in fact a theorem. But since we are until n, 10 cube, 
So it follows that our 10 is n, our, that our n is 10 here. So <coughs> by substitution, that becomes 10 times 10 plus 1 all over 2. 10 over 2 is 5. 10 plus 1 here is 11. So 5 times 11 will be 55. But you have to square it still. 55 times 55 or 55 squared is 3,025. Hence, letter C is the correct answer. 45. Find C sub 1 and C sub 2 such that V could be expressed as a linear combination of V sub 1 and V sub 2, where V is 14, 34, V sub 1 is 3, 5, and V sub 2 is 1, 7. That is, that is the product of C sub 1 and V sub 1 added by the product of C sub 2, V sub 2 is equal to your V. Which one do you think? is the correct answer. So let's discuss it now. So from here, using this definition, we have C sub one times V one, which is three five, plus C sub two times the second vector, which is uh, one seven. We have here one seven rather equals 14, 34. So distributing the C sub 1s here and the C sub 2s here, you have 3 C sub 1, 5 C sub 1, plus 1 C sub 2, or simply C sub 2, comma 7 C2 equals 14, 34. 3 C sub 1 and 1 C sub 2, or simply C sub 2, are the first elements, and their sum here is 14. Hence, you have 3 C sub 1 plus C sub 2 equals 14, and for the second uh, terms, or for the second element, 5C sub 1, plus the 7C sub 2 is equal to 34, respectively. So now you have systems of linear equation. You could do elimination, sub a substitution, elimination, whatsoever. For now, I chose to do substitution. So if I have here the first equation, uh, to solve for C sub 2, I subtracted both sides by 3C sub 1. That's why C sub 2 equals 14 minus 3C sub 1. And I intend to replace the C sub 2 of the second equation by 14 minus 3C sub 1. That's why I have this. I hope you could follow the reasoning. Then distribute this one. 7 times 14 will be 98. 7 times negative 3c sub 1 is negative 21c sub 1. From here, I could see that 5c sub 1 minus 21c sub 1 is negative 16c sub 1. This 98 will become minus here. You will have 34 minus 98, which is negative 64. Dividing both sides by negative 16, you have c sub 1 equals 4. Now that I have the value of C sub 1, which is 4, I will utilize now this equation, substitute the value of C sub 1 as 4. That's why I have C sub 2 equals 14 minus 3 times 4. 3 times 4 is 12. So C sub 2 is 14 minus 12, or simply 2. Hence, C sub 1 is 4 and C sub 2 is 2, letter C. 46. Let Z be the set of integers. Which of the following is equal to 4Z? Is it 4Z plus 1, 4Z plus 2, 4Z plus 3, or 4Z plus 4? So if this is the original 4Z, when we say 4Z plus 1, each term of 4Z, which is in fact the set of uh, multiples of 4, integral multiples of 4, if you add 1 to it, so you have to add 1 to each term, like this. Negative 12 plus 1, that's negative 11. Negative 8 plus 1, negative 7. Negative 4 plus 1, negative 3, and so on, until 12 plus 13, we have 12 plus 1, 13, and so on. So you could actually 
have this uh, uh, going to the left and going to the right further. But if you could see, the terms here are not equal. So 4z plus 1 is wrong. If I have 4z plus 2, so it means you add each term of 4z by 2. Negative 12 plus 2 will be negative 10. Negative 8 plus 2 will be negative 6. Four plus, negative 4 plus 2 will be negative 2. 0 plus 2 will be 2 and so on. But again, they are not alike. So 4z plus 2 is wrong. If I have 4z plus 3, you could see negative 12 plus 3, 9, negative 9. And negative 8 plus negative 5, uh, negative 8 plus 3, that's negative 5. And so on until you have these uh, terms. But again, they are not equal. However, if I have 4z plus 4, negative 12 plus 4, it's negative 8. Negative 8 plus 4, it's negative 4. Negative 4 plus 4 is 0. 0 plus 4 is 4. And so on until 12 plus 4, which is 16. You might think, sir, there's no 16 here. Remember, you are going to continue the pattern to the left and to the right. And you could actually see that they are equal in terms of their terms. Hence, 4z plus 4 is just equal to 4z. Letter D. 47. Given a line L and a point P not on line L, there exists infinitely many lines through P that do not intersect line L. This is true in what type of geometry? Is it hyperbolic, elliptic, Euclidean, or Lambert? And the correct answer is ta -da! hyperbolic. In fact, we have what we call parallel lines. And you have your ultra parallel lines in your hyperbolic geometry. Um, using Playfair's postulate, like um, in the Euclidean plane, there's exactly one. In hyperbolic, there are infinitely many, but for elliptic, there's none. So letter A is the correct answer here. So we're talking about your modern geometry, a bit only. 48, the measures of the interior angles of triangles in elliptic geometry add up to is it A, less than 180 degrees, B, negative, uh, equal to 180 degrees, C, greater than 180 degrees, or D, it's a no. What do you think? And the correct answer here is, in letter A, it's less than 180 is true for hyperbolic, uh, for triangles in hyperbolic geometry. For the Euclidean plane, meaning to say in the flat surface, the ones that we are usually studying in high school, it's exactly 180. However, in elliptic geometry, or let's say if you place triangles like in surfaces of globes or of, of spheres, you could actually see that it's more than 180. That's why it's greater than 180 in elliptic geometry. Letter C. 49. In inferential statistics, if the computed p value is less than the significance level or your alpha, usually like 0 0.05 and so on, then uh, which is the best thing to do? Which of A, B, C, or D is correct? That is, we have to remember this, that if the value of P is less than our alpha level, then there is a sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis. HO, by the way, is a null hypothesis. And if you rejected the null hypothesis, you have to report the H1 or the alternative hypothesis. However, that's why the correct answer here is letter A. However, if the value of P is greater than your alpha, then do not reject the HO and you have to report the HO. 50. This type of triangle has two ordinary points and one ideal point. This triangle is called A, alpha triangle, B, beta triangle, C, 
gamma triangle or D, omega triangle. If you are studying hyperbolic geometry, you could actually know that this is the definition of what we call omega triangle. An omega triangle has two ordinary points. In this case, we have A and B. But if you have this uh, line, for example, you uh, it's like you will form a triangle, but it's like, uh, quote, unquote, they will intersect to, in to infinity, quote, unquote. That's why this is what you call your ideal point, your omega point. Letter D is the correct answer here. I hope you learned something out of the discussion, and I wish you all the best for the licensure examination for teachers. With that, TYVM, thank you very much, and a great day to one and all. God bless everyone.